Welcome to CardioCast. I'm Dr. Jim Dwyer. This week, community-wide use of a salt substitute cut new hypertension cases in half. Pairing ticagrelor and aspirin in patients with stable coronary artery disease and type 2 diabetes delivered modest benefits but a bigger bleed risk. And peripheral artery disease patients who quit their statins nearly doubled their risk of death. But first, giving the diabetes drug dipagliflozin to heart failure patients with reduced ejection fraction who did not have diabetes cut their risk of cardiovascular death or heart failure events by 27%. That significant drop could change the status of the SGLT2 inhibitor from fundamentally a drug that treats diabetes to a drug that treats heart failure. The DAPA-HF trial showed statistically significant benefits when adding dipagliflozin to guideline-directed heart failure therapy. Outcomes included a 17% drop in all-cause death compared with placebo and an 18% fall in cardiovascular death. Patients also saw a 25% relative reduction in total heart failure hospitalizations plus cardiovascular deaths during a median follow-up of just over 18 months. The study's primary endpoint was the reduction in cardiovascular death, first heart failure hospitalization, or an urgent heart failure visit. That endpoint fell by 25% in patients with diabetes and by 27% in the patients who had no diabetes. Dr. John McMurray of the University of Glasgow presented the trial results at the European Society of Cardiology. He says the findings will likely change how dipagliflozin is used. My interpretation of the results of the dapagliflozin trial are that dapagliflozin is definitely a drug for the treatment of heart failure. It's also a drug, of course, for treatment of diabetes because it lowers blood glucose, but it clearly does more than that. And even in heart failure patients without diabetes, there's a very substantial reduction in risk of adverse events, heart failure hospitalization, cardiovascular death. So clearly a new treatment for heart failure. Given the results, should doctors start giving dipagliflozin to heart failure patients without diabetes? For heart failure patients without diabetes, we should, of course, wait for regulatory review, for the guidelines committees to opine. I think it would be too early to advocate the use of dipagliflozin in heart failure patients without diabetes. A comprehensive community-wide strategy to replace conventional table salt with a formulation that was 25% potassium chloride halved incident hypertension in six rural Peruvian villages. And the initiative also dropped blood pressure in people with baseline hypertension. Dr. J. Jamie Miranda is director of the Chronicus Center of Excellence at the Cayetano Heredia Peruvian University in Lima. He presented the program's findings at the annual Congress of the European Society of Cardiology. We wanted to achieve and and shape a pragmatic strategy, and a pragmatic strategy that incorporates day-to-day behaviors, and we eat every day, but we think very less of our salt habits. So instead of thinking of a new product or a new task, we wanted to replace the entire supply. The investigators borrowed principles from social marketing to ensure community-wide replacement of table salt with the low-sodium substitute. They branded and packaged the low-sodium salt and gave it to participants at no cost, but with a catch. To receive the low-sodium salt, participants had to turn in their table salt. At the end of the study, people with hypertension saw a drop in systolic blood pressure of nearly 2 millimeters of mercury and new hypertension diagnoses fell by 55%. Dr. Miranda says the key to success was taking a community approach. And that's the important thing that we wanted to shift the entire distribution of blood pressure in the village. And by shifting that, you see gains not only in public health, but also effective um, uh, improvements in blood pressure at people at high risk, particularly those who tend to have high blood pressure. We'll be right back after this message.
patients with stable coronary artery disease and type 2 diabetes saw fewer ischemic cardiovascular events when they received dual antiplatelet therapy with ticagrelor plus aspirin. But they also had more major bleeding events than patients receiving placebo plus aspirin. Those are the key findings from the effect of ticagrelor on health outcomes in diabetes mellitus patients intervention study, or THEMIS. The International Multisite Study randomized more than 19,000 patients to receive aspirin plus placebo or ticagrelor. Researchers from Harvard Medical School in Boston presented the THEMIS findings at the annual Congress of the European Society of Cardiology. Ischemic events were the study's primary efficacy outcome. They occurred in 7.7% of patients taking ticagrelor and in 8.5% of those on placebo. All-cause mortality was similar between study groups. Though ischemic events dropped, the researchers cautioned that benefit came at the expense of more bleeding. Major bleeding was seen in 2.2% of those taking ticagrelor, but in only 1% of the placebo group. Intracranial hemorrhage was also more common for patients on ticagrelor. But the incidence was low, and the absolute difference between groups was small. For patients with peripheral artery disease, statin therapy is a literal lifeline that nearly halves mortality risk. That's the primary finding from new research presented at the annual Congress of the European Society of Cardiology. Dr. Jörn Dapheide of Bern University Hospital in Switzerland and his colleagues analyzed the association between statin adherence and survival in nearly 700 patients with peripheral artery disease. Dr. Dapheida says those patients who took statins saw mortality benefits. We were able to see that patients who were always on their statin therapy had a pretty low mortality rate of about 20%, but patients who had even an intensified therapy had a 10% mortality rate, and patients where we started a statin therapy still profited from it and uh, had only a 15% mortality rate. But for those who did not take statins or who quit taking statins, the mortality numbers were grim. But on the other hand, which was uh, not surprisingly, patients who were never on statins or discontinued their medication with statins were about 35% mortality rate. But the most shocking to us was that when patients discontinued their usual doses and decreased it, they suffered an even higher mortality rate of nearly 43%. Dr. Dapheida acknowledges that it's challenging to identify these high-risk patients and keep them statin-adherent. That patients with peripheral arterial disease are a little bit more underrepresented in the daily practice. Um, first of all, it's hard to identify them when they're asymptomatic, but as soon as a patient is symptomatic, well, one should really at least keep the patient on the statin dosage they have, if they have a statin. If not, quickly introduce a statin dosage, but never discontinue with a statin or decrease the dosage. And tell them that they are at a very high risk uh, to suffer a myocardial infarct or a stroke. Maybe the highest atherosclerotic population to be at uh, such a risk. You can find these stories and more by visiting www.mdedge.com slash cardiology or by clicking the links in the podcast notes. This week's contributors include Mitchell Zoller and Carrie Oakes. CardioCast Cardiology News and MD Edge Cardiology are edited by Katherine Hackett. Remember, you can find CardioCast via Amazon Alexa, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you like what you hear, please leave us a rating or review. For MD Edge, I'm Dr. Jim Dwyer.